Welcome to Ulvestan Castle, a hidden gem nestled in the heart of England. This Victorian Gothic masterpiece whispers tales of bygone eras, of noble families and dramatic transformations. Join me as we unravel its fascinating history, brick by brick. Our journey begins around 900 AD, when Vikings landed on these shores. Leaving behind whispers of their presence in the surrounding villages, fast forward to 1086, and Elveston finds itself etched in the Domesday Book, a testament to its early significance. Centuries pass, and the land changes hands. Shelford Priory holds dominion until the dramatic dissolution of the monasteries in 1538. King Henry VIII, ever the shrewd strategist, seizes the estate, eventually selling it to Sir Michael Stanhope a man who will become forever intertwined with the castle. In a pivotal year of 1633, Sir John Stanhope, heir to the newly acquired lands, constructs an Elizabethan manor house, laying the foundation for the grand edifice that would stand in its place centuries later. In 1742, the Stanhope family ascends, and William Stanhope earning the title of First Earl of Harrington. Elvestown becomes a symbol of their prestige, a jewel in their aristocratic crown. But time, as it always does, marches on, bringing with it the winds of change. In 1817, James Wyatt, a renowned architect whose vision would transform Elveston forever, he embarks on a grand Gothic revival project, adding turrets, battlements, and intricate stonework, shaping the castle into the romantic masterpiece we see today. But Elveston wasn't just about the castle, Charles Stanhope, 4th Earl of Harrington commissioned landscape gardener William Barron to redesign the gardens. The 4th Earl caused scandal by marrying an actress 17 years his junior, Maria Foote. Barron would spend the next 20 years working on the gardens. He even brought in full-grown trees using a tree planting machine. He had designed to try to give instant gratification to the Earl. The 4th Earl and his Countess valued their garden. For the romantic seclusion it afforded them, However, following the death of their only son aged four, the couple isolated themselves at the castle, never leaving and forbidding anyone from entering the grounds. Following the fourth Earl's death in 1851, his brother, Lester Stanhope, the fifth Earl of Harrington, opened the gardens to the public. They became renowned as a Gothic paradise and are grade to listed. The estate contains over 50 structures, including stables, kennels, a walled garden, a home farm, several cottages, gate lodges, an ice house and a boat house. The deterioration of the castle and estate, which started after the Second World War, continued until the 1970s. Although restoration work was carried out and the gardens and park brought back into good heart, but the operating costs were significant. Following the Countryside Act 1968, the estate was sold in 1969 by William Stanhope. 11th Earl of Harrington to Derbyshire County Council. By the Countryside Act proposed the creation of country parks for the enjoyment of the countryside by the public. The council opened the estate to the public in 1970 and have operated it since then as Elveston Castle Country Park. Thank you for watching and don't forget to support this channel with clicking on like or subscribe button for more interesting content.